There we go. Okay, I got a notification that said you are consenting to being recorded. <laughs> I was like, never seen that one pop up before. Okay, so hey you guys, happy Thursday. Thank you so much for getting on. I'm so excited to host this. And it's actually a funny story because I was talking to one of my ADKs on my team, Brittany Haynes, and I was like, you know, I was like, I'm gonna message Lisa and just, I wanna step up more. Like I go live in our team pages a lot. And like, I'm what a lot of people don't see is I'm very active in like our chats and like one-on-one -on -one with my team. But like, I was like, I wanna do more Zooms. Like I wanna step up more. So I messaged Lisa on Tuesday and I said, Lisa, I wanna step up. I was like, throw me in coach. Like what do I gotta do, you know? And she goes, how's Thursday sound? I was like, well, that's in 48 hours, but you know what? I got this, like, we're gonna roll with it. Um, so I was just like, you know what, throw me in, like, it's fine. She gave me 48 hours notice, and I was like, I know exactly what I wanna talk about. Um, so I grabbed two of, um, two of some of my favorite people, Shelby and Camille, and I think that their stories are so inspiring because they both went through completely different challenges, um, completely different people, um, they're in this, I was going to say opposite sides of the country, but they're both in California. So that would be false. Um, but their stories are just so inspiring to me. I love them so much. And, um, they have both overcome obstacles in their business that I think are relatable to a lot of people, whether it be like mindset or like physical obstacles, um, and then still turned around to come back, crush it. Shelby went on 40 K Camille went 12 K earned her $12,000 bonus, just cashed in on her vehicle the other day. It's so pretty. Um, so I want them to share with you, um, what they did, how they did it, like the things that they struggled with when they were going through those, those moments and like some applicable things that can really get you through it because, we're human and I mean, I struggle, right? So I always say new levels, new devils. I remember when Shelby went 40K, she was like, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe that happened. And I was like, stop sister, like congratulations, but get ready because now a new level brings new devils. And I'm, so I'm pretty sure she can nod her head. Like I was right. <laughs> I, was like, yeah, I love you and congratulations, but get ready for it. So um, just some things that you guys could do some applicable tips and most hopefully inspire you to let you like to tell you, just keep going um, no matter what everybody's business has ups and downs. I've gone through it, Lisa's gone through it. I'm looking at Janelle on here, Janelle's gone through it. Uh, Anna, Jessica, Janet, all of you guys, Karen, Angelica, Danny, like we've all gone through it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna call, I'm, I'll call you guys out. Okay, so I wanna start with Shelby. Um, can you unmute yourself or do I have to do that? I click the button. Oh, can you hear me okay? I can, yeah. Okay, okay You're so. Books. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so this is Shelby. Um, she's my sister from another mister, I swear. She's like the me on the West Coast. So Shelby, can you just like share a little bit, first of all, with everybody, how you got started like in network marketing as a whole, like what introduced you to it, um, and then how you found yourself here with LaBelle? Okay, so I'll be honest, I don't even remember how I originally found the industry. I know it, obviously it was on social media. It was on Facebook. I think, um, I did not start with Lavelle. I was with another company and I am sure that a lot of people also started with that company, but we won't name names. And I was with that company for, I think just about a year and it was rough but I had the vision. I saw the opportunity. I didn't come from a lot and I wanted something completely different for my life. So I knew that this was the route that could get me there. Um, but that company was not my home. So after about a year, I knew I wanted to walk away and Katie actually found me on Instagram and something told me to stalk her page. <laughs> <laughs> when she followed me, which I had never done with other people. Typically, um, that's just not how I did it. And my gut was like, okay, check her out, see what she's about. And I saw her posting all of these things. And she was with the company I was with, and she found this amazing new company and she was living her best life. And so I sent her a message. I tried a, um, I think I did a six day from you and Patrick and I shared it. And Oh, I ran out on a Monday and two days later, I hit the promoter button and ordered my pack. And that was almost three years ago. <laughs> it's like nuts that it's already been almost three years. 
<laughs> it's literally wow. insane awesome. that we worked together for almost three years now. We finally just met at conference. Um, so awesome. when you started, walk me through, well, not me, because I know, um, walk everybody through like what happened. So you came in, you went 4k, right? Mm-hmm. Things were going good. And then explain to people, like, how did you start? How did you take off? And then like, what happened? Okay. So I started in August. And I was literally telling everyone on the face of the freaking earth about what I was doing. I was sending messages. I called my mom. I called my best friend. I'm like, this is what I have and you have to have it. And they all got minis. And I think I actually sold all of them. And I came in, I did not actually, I missed my VIPs. I just barely missed when it was the iPad bonus. Um, but I kept going. And in October of that year, I went 4k for the first time. And that was so exciting. And I remember that day because it was like a horrible day at work. I was in such a bad mood. And then I got home and Katie texted me and she goes, check your back office. And I had gone 4k and didn't even know it. And it was Halloween. Actually, I took a goofy picture of myself with my jack-o'-lantern on my front porch (laughs) Um, and then it was going great. And in March of the next year, everything kind of fell apart. Um, I had a lot of internal battles, if you will. It was a slow season. I let that get to me. I stopped working. I didn't believe in myself. I thought that I was in the wrong place. Um, it was really, really hard for, I always cry when I talk about this (laughs) for, um, probably six months. I think it was six months. It was March to, it was April to September. I didn't do anything. I I remember you you came back like with a vengeance in October. So, (laughs) um, I did. So I didn't do I didn't do shit for like six months, nothing. I didn't talk to Katie. I didn't get on the Zooms. I didn't work my business. And I dug myself into this hole that I thought that I wasn't gonna be able to get out of. Um, I wasn't working, so I had no potentials. And because I had no potentials, I felt embarrassed because I wasn't working. And I knew that it was my fault. And that kind of, it was like this vicious cycle that I was in and it just didn't stop for a while. Um, everything dropped back down. I think that I just disappeared basically. And then I remember it was September because it was like Labor Day weekend or something like that. And they came out with the $25 credits for new accounts promo. And I had had a conversation with Patrick the day before, because I was so depressed because this is where I wanted to be, but I wasn't taking action to be here. Um, and he said, you're either, you can either sit here and cry about it, or you can get back to work and you can fix it. Like you can't do both at the same time. And he was 100% right. You can't have both. Um, so the next day they came out with that $25 in credits promo. And I texted Katie and I was like, okay, I'm back. I'm here. I love this promotion and I'm going to come back. And she actually said something that stuck with me since then was that a promotion is not going to give you the motivation to be here. That's not what's going to keep you here. A promotion, credits, none of that stuff. It's amazing, but none of that is what's going to get you to where you want to be in your business. You have to want it within yourself and you have to be willing to take the action on the hard days um, when you really don't want to show up. And that's what hurt me is I didn't want to show up and I didn't day after day after day after day. So, um, that month I got my 4k back. I went 12k that same month. I got my auto bonus that month. Um, I remember bawling like a baby in Patrick's truck (laughs) and like, I think I'm pretty sure I was running around the house screaming because I had done all of that that month. And I'll tell you, I didn't think that that was possible. The only thing that helped me do that was I literally prayed every second of every single freaking day, all the time. I think that that night I was what? I was at a couple thousand away in volume from missing it, actually, the auto bonus that month. And I just prayed all the time, constantly, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I know that I'm going to do it. 
you have a way, you have a plan. I don't understand it, but it's going to happen. And that was when I was at work looking at my computer, when I was driving home, when I was freaking on the toilet, whatever, all the time. <laughs> I was just, I had the fire. And then uh, September, October, November, December. April. I think six, six months after that, I think it was March. It was like the last day. It was like the 29th of March or something. We went 40 K six months later. Yeah. Um, I was at my mom's house for dinner for that one. That one, I jumped off the couch screaming and my whole family looked at me like I was a psycho. <laughs> um, so it was, I fell off because of myself to put it shortly. Right. And I love that you had mentioned what Patrick said, like you can either just ball up and like let mm -hmm. this run you over or you can get back on the wagon. And I heard, I'm writing notes down because y'all like, I never stop learning. Like that's a million dollar tip there. Like don't ever, don't think you're too good to learn. I'm over here drawing notes. Um, I heard a, a quote, someone said, you can either become your fears or you can overcome them. You can either let them like succumb to your fears and those limiting beliefs of I'm too scared. I can't do this. What if I fail? Um, what if someone says, no, I don't think I have what it takes. It's a vicious cycle, you know, and you talk yourself out of things and then you start overthinking and all of a sudden you've like succumbed to those fears. And when you look up, like Shelby had done, her volume was gone. She had no potential. She had lost her consistency. She let, she let those fears become her. And then one day mm -hmm. she was like, you know what, like I'm done, I'm fed up. And then she overcame those fears. So I love, love, love that, um, you did bring that up. And then also you had mentioned, the jump in volume that you have, right? Like mm -hmm. you guys went probably it was like what, like eight or nine or 10,000 to 12 on the last day of the month. And mm -hmm. you're not the first person that's happened to. So it is yeah. June 24th. We have like a week left in the month and I'm, I'm willing to bet that there are people on here right now who are not on track for their rank or who are not on track to hit the next rank or maintain their rank, who are thinking that it can't be done. And number one, don't think that way. And number two, miracles happen. Like I've seen them happen with Shelby. Um, I, Brittany Haynes and Chrissy Kenton, um, Brittany's an 80K, Chrissy's a 12K. When they were going for their 12Ks, I watched them both bring in four or $5,000 in volume on the last day of the month. It can happen, mm -hmm. uh, but you, you can't just tell yourself that it can't happen because whatever you say, if you say you can or you say you can't, you're right. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I've had to learn too is, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you tell yourself, I have no potentials, I've lost my consistency, what's the point? That's the attitude that you're going to have the entire day. And I don't know if y'all know this, but when you're in the network marketing space or the direct sales space or whatever, people can read you like a book. Everything that we do is literally energy, okay? Money's energy, your yep. consistency is energy, your posting is energy, your following up is energy. It's literally all energy. And when you're operating out of the wrong energy, people can feel that. You know, I will get myself in the right headspace every morning when I wake up. I don't touch my phone when I wake up. I don't check my Instagram. I don't check my TikTok. I guess I am a TikToker. Um, I'm not a good TikToker, but I'm a TikToker. I don't check any of it because I get myself right. That way I can operate out of a, out of a higher energy and a higher frequency and show right. up the way that I need to show up. So, um, and then you also had said that what I said to you, I'm sorry, I'm just like my notes here is that you guys promos. I love promos and I love even more that all of our promos are just so they're so different all the time. Like we have the tag team one, the $25 in credits, the double, triple fast starts. Like they're always coming up with ways, the credit reimbursements, there's all, they're always coming up with ways to spoil us, right? A lot of companies, like every other weekend, it's the same damn promo over and over and over again. And you're like, I'll just wait till next time because I know y'all are going to have it again in 48 hours. Our promos are always different. They're always spoiling us. We're still a newer company. Like we're old enough to be debt free and established, but new enough to still be ground floor, right? So we are still, Jason and Paul and Drew, they're still testing the waters. They're still like, throwing noodles at the wall with promos going like, what's going to stick? You know, like, what do, what do they love? What do they run with? So they're always trying to be creative and throw new stuff at us. And I love that. But yeah. we don't look for the promos. You know what I mean? Those promos and can, they can give you higher paychecks. You can earn bonuses. And those bonuses can give you a taste of what a true residual income check can look like. Um, but at the end of the day, like those promos, they, they go away. Those bonus checks, they disappear. So we're here for the long run. Like Shelby now is paying for her wedding 
in cash. You know what I mean? Like that didn't come from the $25 credit promo that we had two years ago. That came from consistent no. working, working her business. Um, so is there anything else show me that you wanted to throw in there just for anybody who, um, maybe is like on the edge of the wagon and they're like, man, this is hard. I don't know if I could do this. Like I'm feeling stuck. I'm feeling like I'm in a rut. Um, like what's my, what's the point? Like, do you have anything to say? Yeah. Like, yeah. So one thing that I do want to say is that, well, there's a couple things, but first of all, <laughs> um, so I had, I got my 40 K and I think it was six months later. I also lost that 40 K. So I just want you guys to understand that that is okay. There were a couple of people who ended up walking away and I've been rebuilding ever since. And that's okay because that's just, if that's the season that you're in with me, like that's just the season that you're in. Just know that it's not embarrassing. It's not, you know, whatever you're thinking, it's not a negative thing. It doesn't mean that you're bad at this. It doesn't mean that you're not meant to be here. It's just seasons that we go through. And sometimes people are going to walk away, but you have to also understand that things are going to fall apart so that you can rebuild them stronger. Um, this, this business is not hard, but it's also not easy. And the fact that you are always going to be battling you, like you are going to be the person that you are fighting the most because we're our biggest critics. And that's exactly what knocked me down a couple of years ago. And I almost didn't come back. And if I hadn't come back, there would have been so many things that we would have missed out on the auto bonus, buying a house, helping like pay for our wedding, like all these huge things that we're able to do now would have never, ever happened if I had left and just stayed away and never come back. And, um, another thing is to just not doubt the vision that you have because, you're not here for no reason. You were brought to this for a reason. You found whoever your upline is for a reason, or maybe in my case, they found you for a reason. Um, it's not a random thing. I truly don't believe that it is. God puts a vision on your heart and he puts an idea in your head and he gives you those steps to get there, whether you understand it or not. There was no way that I got that, how, whatever it was, two or 3000 in sales in two days by myself. Like there was no effing way that that was going to happen by myself, but there's a higher power and you build a strong team to do these things with you. And that's how stuff like this happens. And it's, it can happen to anybody. I'm not anybody special. I mean, yeah. I think that we're all special in our own ways, but it's not like we're these huge magical people that are just like customers and promoters come to me. Like, no, we yeah. all work hard. We all fight the same battles. And I love that you I love that you brought up too, that you had lost your 40 K because what a lot of people don't know, I'm very transparent. Like I will share every day of the week. I had lost my 200 K twice, twice. Like we got it back, had it for a couple months, lost it, got it back, lost it. And now, you know, we do hold it now, but I lost it twice. Like what if I would have walked away the first time I lost it and was like, Oh man, you know what I mean? Like from going from a 200 K to an 80 K, if you're familiar with the compensation plan, when you hit 200K, your unit level commissions, it doubles, okay? So my unit level commissions, when I lost that 200K, my check literally got cut in half. Like, like you know, and what if I would have yeah. walked away? What if Shelby would have walked away? You know, they were able to buy a home and she got a new vehicle and, and those, so she pushed through it, right? Like, and I don't like the term, like, rebuilding. I feel like we're always building. You know, there's always going to be somebody who walks away. There's always going to be someone who says something about it. But, like, who cares? This is your vision. It was on your heart for a reason. Um, and, like you had said, um, you, were given the, you were given the vision for a reason, right? And I think that so many people were like, you know, God, give us a cake or, you know, the universe, and I, I don't want to, like, offend anybody, whatever you believe in, but, like, for me personally, like, I'll be like, God, give me a cake, you know, and God will give me the eggs and the flour and the pan and the oven, and we're like, oh, no, no, that's too hard, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you have everything that you need in front of you to make the cake, the consistency, the trainings, going live, um, sharing your the products, the three steps, the compensation plan. These are the ingredients to your cake. But all of a sudden, we look at all these ingredients and we go, there's too much and I don't want it anymore. But then you're like, God, why didn't you send me that cake? <laughs> you know what I mean? You can yeah. pray. You can pray for a runner, but are, you, what, what you're going to get is the opportunity to go find the runner. You can pray for a 
large growing business. And instead you're going to get the opportunity to go grow a large growing business. You're not just going to poof, like here's a huge business that I woke up to overnight because I prayed for it and I wished for it. This is not a wish, like wish work marketing, right? It's network marketing. We're networking. Um, so I love that you had said that. And one thing too, um, that I wanted to bring up Shelby is what well, this doesn't really have to do with you, but it does. We were at a conference and we had a big cry fest and it was a huge crap show. It was so fun. We all sat at the table and bald. We, we all bald. We kind of went through, um, you know, what our insecurities are, like what our limiting beliefs are, you know, and those things. And I think that it's super important that we had that moment because Shelby cried and then I cried and then someone told me to buck up. <laughs> Christina was like, Shh, um, but Shelby, <laughs> in that moment, she had said, you know, I'm going to throw you under the bus. I hope you don't mind. She had said, I'm down on myself because I know that right now my work ethic is not where it should be. And mm -hmm. it's okay to have that very real moment. And we had to kind of break down those barriers and like overcome those limiting beliefs. That's like, why is it not where it should be? Like, what do you think needs to change? What can we do to help you? And then when we left conference, she had this whole new belief. She was a $400 pack signing machine. I was like, give me your tips. What do you do? <laughs> Send me your <laughs> You know, and I think it's super important to surround yourself with people who are going to get you uncomfortable. Number one, it's not comfortable to cry in a circle of women, okay? And it's not, in a hotel it's not comfortable. Lobby. It's not in, in a hotel lobby. It's not comfortable to get on this Zoom and I was like, Shelby, you're doing it. Camille, you're doing it. You know, and I was like, throw up before throw up. <laughs> like, get it out, you know. Um, but surround yourself with people who are gonna encourage you to level up, you know. And sometimes we're surrounded by friends and family who maybe don't see the vision or who just don't mm -hmm. understand the industry, and that's okay. Our job is not to convince anybody, but to educate people. And if some people just simply don't want to educate themselves, there's nothing you can do. Ariana, are you in a hospital with a baby? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm sorry. I was like, oh no, is she okay? And then I saw a baby head. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> um, so surround yourself with the doers. And sometimes the non-believers are your mom, your mm -hmm. husband, um, your friends, your coworkers, but the good, I mean, unless it's your husband, you're kind of stuck with him. Um, <laughs> if it's a coworker or, you know, limit the time that you spend around them. Choose not to go out to drinks with those yeah. people on the weekend. Choose not to participate in any extracurriculars with those people when you're not working. You know, you can't obviously, you know, just up and quit your job because of a coworker, but limit your time that those people are around you because you don't want to take their energy and make it your own. And right. I think that's super important to surround yourself with people. Show me your five closest friends. I'll show you your future. You know, if I walk into a room full of people and I'm the smartest person and I'm the most successful person, I'm in the wrong damn room. I'm going to go find another room full of people who are where I want to be, who have done I want, done what I want to do. I'm going to go put me in a room with Lisa Fuller and Amanda Arnett and Twin, you know, and Courtney Glaser and Maria and, and Chaz. Like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go rub shoulders with them because they've done what I want to do. You know, they've accomplished things I want to accomplish. So I'm going to surround myself with those people and then just limit the time of the people who drag me down because y'all, that can be yeah. draining. Like there's some people out there that you just got to take in small quantities, call it what it is, you know? Um, so I love that we had that connection at conference. And I think that it was super important because we were able to, as a, as a community, you know, talk each other through our struggles and we left completely different women. So that was super important. That's my tangent. Um, Shelby, anything <laughs> else? Or can we? Um, I think the last thing that I want to say is just remember, like, we all have the same comp plan. We all have the same products. You have the same comp plan and products as Katie, as, um, you know, Lisa, as Amanda Arnett, as all these amazing people who have done all these amazing things. We all have the same thing in our hands. It's just what you are going to bring to the table and what you need to bring to the table is yourself. Just you're not going to attract your people if you are not you. And that's, that's just the biggest thing. Yeah, that's so true too. Your vibe attracts your friend. That's why I can't stand when people are like, oh, it's so easy to make money. You're going to attract people who are have like minimum wage work ethics because they thought it was easy. And then when it gets hard, they're going to run away. Like I tell I people, it's, it's work, but it's the most worth it work. Oh my God, what a tongue twister. It's the most worth it work <laughs> I've ever done. 
So thank you, Shelby. I love you so much. Okay, Camille, hi. Can I ask you to unmute yourself? Hi. Oh, you're so quiet. Let me turn my mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is Camille, you guys, and we actually just got the chance to meet the first time as well at conference, um, which was super fun. So let's just go right into it. Do you want to share? your network marketing experience, like how you were introduced to the industry, what, you know, how did you find Lavelle? Um, and then what, how has that journey been for you? Um, so my answer to that was, is really short actually, because I was only introduced to the network marketing industry um, a few months before I found Lavelle because my sister-in-law was dabbling with the same company that most of us here dabbled with. And I just wanted to support her. So I signed up right away. I was her first promoter and I told her, I'm gonna give it three solid months of consistency. And if nothing happens, then I'm out. And so that's what I did. Um, um, I even opened up my house like I, you know, hosted like a um, in-person sort of launch and it didn't really go anywhere. Um, but during that time, I guess everything happens for a reason because I started following Katie. She was um, like very influential. And so in that company, I found her page and I was like, well, I'll follow her. She looks really successful. And within a few months of me following you, I um, realized that you went live saying that you were going to another company. And I was like, oh, this is really encouraging. <laughs> so anyways, I stopped doing that with my sister-in-law and um, I watched you for two whole years before I even thought about jumping on board with another company because it really wasn't something that I was looking for. Um, but my husband and I are small business owners already. So, um, I definitely understand the comp plan and how that works, but, um, it just really wasn't what I was, you know, looking for. So I watched Katie for two years. She, you know, grabbed her auto bonus. I seen her and her husband buy a new house and so on and so on. I'm just like, dang, like, I really want to check this out. Um, can I keep on babbling or go for it? Okay. Um, and so what really led me to um, try the products, I did hit the promoter button because I'm a really red personality. If I see an opportunity to make money, I normally am like raising my hand. Um, but I honestly just wanted to try the products. I had heard how amazing they were. I seen everything Katie was posting with her crazy littles and, you know, keeping up with her kids. And I was in a very bad stage of postpartum depression. Um, my baby was four months old and that was my fourth. So I have four kids and I own and operate a daycare. So you can only imagine how crazy my life is. So for me, um, I did sign up as a promoter initially, but I did nothing with the business part of it. Um, I was just wanting to try the products to see if it would give me energy. I was nursing my son and I was trying to keep up with him with that without the coffee. And then I found myself sneaking like two, three cups and I'm like, okay, I'm starting to feel bad. So I hit the promoter button, but when I got my products, I was just so amazed that I was keeping up with my life now. I was a day one thriver. So I was just like, wow, this is amazing. So I didn't even do anything with um, the business part at that time, I didn't post anything. I didn't go after my VIPs. Katie inboxed me. She's like, Hey, you're quiet. Do you have any questions? And I'm just like, just over here thriving, loving life, you know, but I wasn't working the business. Um, so anyways, 2020 hit and, um, I lost my income completely with the daycare. All my parents were laid off. They were, um, you know, just, I didn't, I didn't have, there was no need for daycare at that point. And so um, I was like, well, you know what? I'll just start working the business. And so in April of 2020, I went 4K because I had nothing but time. I was just sitting there working. I was home. My husband was laid off from his nine to five too. So there was nothing but time. Um, I hit 4K. And after that, I honestly just stopped. Um, I had two promoters under me, but I remember Katie even writing me on the last day of the month. And she was like, wow, your PV is 3,200. So the only thing I had from my other promoters that were under me were their promoter packs. Like that was the only volume that I got from them. Everything else was just me. So um, after I hit 4K, I was just kind of like, okay, like what's next, you know? And um, on top of that, social media was really negative during that time. It was, everything was political. Everybody was just like tearing each other apart with their own opinions. And so it really took a toll on me and, um, just coming out of the postpartum, it was kind of triggering me. So I just let it all go. So 
the 4K success was really short lived. I just hit it that one month. After that, I maintained about 2000 in volume just from referrals and, you know, customers still ordering their products. Um, but I didn't do anything else until January of 2021. Um, once they, we had the call, what was it? It was a CEO call on, I think, January 7th. And that's where they announced the operation winning bonus, the rank advancement bonuses. And your girl is red here. So I was like, let's go. I'm jumping back in. And um, it's really funny because I had never hopped on one of those calls before. Like never. Like I didn't even know. I thought it was a Zoom. Actually, I was trying to log in Zoom and I'm like, what's going on? And it was the, the CEO call. On, you know, you had to enter the pin and all that. So I didn't even know. But something told me I was laying in my bed and something told me to hop on that call. And I did. And that's kind of what lit my fire to, you know, jump back in and go ahead and get started. Do you want me to just keep talking? Because I'm just like going. Well, no, you, you were like, this is short. <laughs> well, my introduction to network marketing was short, just like You're three right, months yeah, ago. Yeah. Right. No, but I just, I'm writing notes because I love that you had mentioned how you watched for two years. And I think like even throw in the chat, if you can, you guys, like how long did you watch for, you know, like me personally, I watched for six months. Okay. So, um, how often do we like expect people to sign up on the first contact or the second contact or even the third contact? And it's like, you waited for two years. So how unfair is it to give somebody else like a timeline of when they need to, you know what I mean? Like really though, like yeah. I waited six months, so it's not fair for me, Brittany, a week. Get out of, get out of chat, Brittany. Um, <laughs> how unfair if I waited for six months, how unfair is it for me to expect somebody to jump in the next day? Right? Like I'm going to give people the grace that I was given, you know, like how long did you wait? Give people that grace. You know, we can't expect people to do things qu quicker than we did because we know what did we do? We watched them. Maybe we tried a mini. Um, we did. We stopped their pages for a couple months. We watched their stories, right? Like people are doing that to you as well, but you have to do, they have to do it in their time. Um, and then you had said that just for when you started, you were only using the products. Like, like you were ordering your products, maybe, maybe thriving for free, but that was it, right? And um, I didn't for free either. I just really love the products. Nah, she was a she was a customer promoter. Like she was just buying her products as a promoter. And it reminds me um, of a training that I had watched. And if you're on my team or you've like been on our work with me Zooms, I've told I, I'm literally obsessed with this training. Okay, it's about a deck of cards. Janelle smiles. She goes, I've seen it three times. Um, <laughs> but essentially, you have to think of your network marketing business as a deck of cards. Okay, <clears throat> if you pull a two through nine. Those are people who are just running an auto ship buying their products. Okay. Uh, Jack, Queen, and King are people who are, you know, maybe going to hit 4K and kind of just like hold their 4K, right? Um, Aces are the ones that are going to run. They're going to run with you until, you know, like 200K. And the Jokers are like the freak of nature. The Jokers are like the Lisa Fullers that go 200K in like 30 days. Okay. How many, you're going to pull a hell of a lot more two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nines than you are aces, right? So if you're, you're flipping over a two and then a six and then a five and then a three and then a four, and you got all these people running an auto ship and you're like, what's wrong with me? And then you quit your next one. Your next one might've been an ace. Your next one might've been someone who came in and went 12 K. You have to keep flipping those cards. You're going to, this I hate saying that network marketing is a numbers game, but really it kind of is because I'll tell you, even myself, I'm very good at enrolling promoters. I mean, it is what it is. I probably have one out of every 10 people stick around longer than six months. So if people are joining you and poof gone, or they're just ordering their products and you want to shake them and be like, why don't you want this? It's not you. There's nothing wrong with you. You just have to keep flipping those cards. You have to keep enrolling people. Are you dedicated to enrolling, personally enrolling a whole deck of cards, 52 people? Are you, how many of y'all, how many people will quit before they've even enrolled 10? Be committed to enrolling 52 people are changing 52 lives. And the only difference between somebody who is a brand promoter and somebody who's walking across the stage as a Lavelle millionaire is that that millionaire has flipped 25 decks of cards. Okay. Maybe you're still working on your first. That's totally fine. Just don't, don't quit on yourself. And then you also mentioned that you went 4k by yourself. Where did you, you just switch sides on my screen? You went 4k alone. 
Okay, me too. I also went 12K alone. So I didn't enroll any serious runners until after I hit 12K. I went 4K by myself and I went 12K mostly by myself. You know, a lot of the volume came from promoter packs because I was bringing in a lot of promoters when I started. Um, so don't, don't have this mentality of like, oh, I enrolled three promoters and they're going to take me to 4K. They're going to take me to 12K because guess what? I've hit the top of the compensation plan and y'all can ask my team. I mean, I'm really not trying to toot my horn, but I'm always like, hey, welcome so-and-so to the team. Welcome so-and-so to the team. Welcome new promoter. Welcome, welcome. I'm still, I'm still out there growing our business. I'm not relying on anybody. Like, so it's not uncommon to have to go 4K by yourself. It's not uncommon to maybe, maybe if you're lucky, have one or two people working with you when you go 12K. You have to keep going. Okay, um, Camille, can you share with us, like, what did you do um, when pandemic hit? You were like, I got nothing but time. You went 4K. Okay, so you, went, you had all that personal volume. Um, and then when you came back this year and you went 12K, it was literally like, I don't, she, she was like, Hi, I'm Camille, 12K. Like people, when she hit 12K, people were like, who is <laughs> Like never seen her name. I was like, yeah, Camille just went 12K. And they were like, who? <laughs> she's like the silent ninja. Like she's very in the chat. She's, she'll just be like, she's there. And then she's just like out doing the business, which also brings me to stop living in chats. <laughs> <laughs> money is not made in the chats so many people live in their chats and they conversate in the chats and i mean it's i love the community that we have i love the sisterhood that we have but like money is not made in the chats so camille will come in in the morning she'll like do her affirmation she's like i'm strong i'm smart i'm amazing poof gonna go build my business which is the way that it should be so what do you do to build your business what did you do january 7th when you got on that call and you were like i want that that rank advancement bonus like what are some things that you did to help you go 12k so um for one i just want to comment on that too because i have a saying for my team which is money is made in messenger and i say that because i think that that's the best way to connect whether it's instagram dm or whether it's replying to stories nonstop, giving compliments my thing is money is made in messenger you can make post after post you can give advice after advice to your own teammates but you're not going to make money there you have to be in messenger connecting anyways back to the question um so for me, um, I was ready to go on January 7th and I started posting, but I'm also very realistic. And I knew that it wasn't going to happen overnight because I was so inconsistent. I had been MIA, MIA for over six months. I mean, every now and then I would still post my vitamins in my chat because I mean, in my um, story, I'm sorry, because I was still taking my products faithfully, but I was not working the business. So the whole three weeks of January, finishing that month up, I just consistently posted. And on the last day of January, I reached out to two of my old potential promoters. And I said, um, Hey, this is what's going on is they announced these huge bonuses. Do you want to run with me? And two people signed up right away. And then my, I signed up my husband too. Cause I was like, you know what? I've gone 4k before. I know if nothing else, I can go 4k under his account and lock in a $4,000 bonus. And that's what I did. So on February 1st, I had $2,800 in volume from promoter packs. But here's the thing. This is the funny part. I did not hit 4K on my husband's account until February 24th. And I'm going to tell you why. I was ready to go, but mentally there was still a lot to do. I went from $2,800 in volume on the first day of the month to still taking an additional 23 days to hit 4K because I didn't get anything else after that. I was still working the business faithfully, but my real turning point was my mindset. And on February 20th, it was the very first Saturday training that I ever um, logged on to on Zoom. And um, Aaron Aponte was speaking and he said something that just rocked my world. Like, honestly, I started bawling because what really helped me more than anything was you, these products helping me out of the darkest place of my life. And so he said, you guys are scared to go live. You're scared to talk about the products with confidence. What if the person that shared these products and this business opportunity with you was scared? What if they never would have brought these products to your door? And I'm just like, holy shit, excuse me, but I'm like, holy shit, because my world would have been so different if I had a never got introduced to Thrive products, honestly. And so I left that meeting. I remember posting a little bit of it in my story, talking to a sideline about it. And I left that meeting with a fire and a confidence to where 
in public, like people would ask me like, oh, what's that sticker? And I would kind of just, you know, shy away from it and this and that. And now I'm like, this is my lifesaver. This is my coffee replacement. This is the shit. You want some? You know what I mean? Because it just, it did something to me because it's real. Like the at that point in time, the business wasn't the best thing in my life. The products were, but it still changed my life. But for so many people on here, the business can rock your world and change your, your whole life drastically, but you're not doing anything about it. Like you're sitting on gold, like this is gold. And if we can get our mindset to match the products and the business and the comp plan, then, then nothing could stop us. And that's what did it for me was him just saying, why are you so scared? What if the person that brought this to you was scared? And so I think that what I took away from that was that confidence is key. Like literally like some of the promoters that I have on my team right now, I never would have imagined like my jaw dropped when they told me they wanted to talk to me about the business, because to me, they were influential people. And here I was influencing them. And they seen that fire in me that got lit on February 20th on that training. And now they're like, holy crap, like, what is this that you're doing? Like, you're different. Something's different about you. You've changed. And I think that that was really it for me was just like walking around with that confidence now to talk to anybody about it, to post with, um, you know, the confidence and knowing that I have something that everybody really does need, whether it's the products or the business, everybody can benefit from what we have. They're not doing your, you a favor. You're doing them a favor. And I love that. Yeah, that's actually very true. Like you're doing them. How, how, like, how do we know if somebody needs this or not? You know, we can look at people's social media and social media is a highlight reels. Like you could look at people's pages and think they got their stuff together. And I mean, on a surface level, my social media three years ago, looked like I had my life together and I was drowning, you know, and I'm thankful that these products were introduced to me. And <clears throat> You had said like when you go out, people are like, oh, what's that? What's that sticker? And here's the thing too. If you get a shirt, let's say you go to, a, you know, you have a friend who's got a boutique. And so your target cashier goes, where'd you get that shirt? You go, oh, my friend's got the boutique. Like this is the name. Check her out on Facebook. And, you know, sales on Thursdays, but whatever. But right. the second that it's a product that you sell, we clam up and we don't want to talk about it. And we get super awkward. Why? You know what I mean? Like, what has this product done for you? What has this business done for you? There are people out there who pray for these opportunities. We cannot prejudge whether someone needs this or not. I mean, I, I think everybody needs it, really. Um, so I love that you had said, now you're confident about it. You know, confidence sells. And here's the thing. I could be sitting in a room with, you know, me and one other promoter. And if the other promoter is like, oh, like it's just, um, it's, it's a vitamin. Yeah, I just, I wear it in the morning. And then Camille's over here like, this is the shit. You want some? <laughs> like, who are they going to order from? Right? They're going to order from her because she's excited and she's clearly confident in what she's got. How do you expect other people to jump in and be excited about the products when you're not? How do you expect other people to jump in and give the business 100% when you're not? Right? Like, we have to be giving what we want other people to to give. And, and I like that you said that also you had said that millions are made in the messenger, which I also think, um, was very good because our posts, and here's the thing too, is people be like, Oh, I posted on Facebook today. I'm like, okay, that's what else did you do though? Because posting is like the bare minimum, you know, your posts are your open sign. Okay. You have a business it's open. What goes down in your DMS? That's when someone walks into your store. That's when someone's browsing your products. That's when somebody has decided based upon seeing your store be open that they want to come in and check it out. Okay. Um, very, very rarely do, does somebody just come to me because of one of my posts, you know? Um, and if they do come to me because of one of my posts, it's because they've been watching my posts for a year. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that also shows that consistency there is key. Um, did you want to share anything? Um, I want to make sure that we're not going over. Um, for anybody who is like, can I do this? Um, I want to jump back in, or you know what, I want to lace my shoes back up, or um, I just I want to go full force balls to the wall. Like, what what could you say to them? Um, I know for me, like you just said, some people are praying for this opportunity, right? And for me, I was praying for this, not the business part of it, but I was praying for an answer. And honestly, I was like specific. Like I remember when the week before 
I messaged you and um, I was praying about it. And I was like, you know what? Like, give me a sign. And I went to church, don't want to offend anybody, but I went to church and the pastor literally was like, um, point number three is you need to thrive in everything you do. Like legitimately, that's what gave me my confirmation. And I was like, I'm ordering it. Like, I don't even care. I'm ordering it. But honestly though, my thing is what I learned is I had that tough conversation with myself and you can't pray for a vehicle and in this case, Thrive is a vehicle to answer our prayers, but you can't pray for a vehicle and be upset when you have to maintain. It. You can't pray for a vehicle and then you get the vehicle in your driveway and it needs an oil change in a couple thousand miles. I mean, every blessing is gonna take maintenance. Every job is gonna take maintenance. I get to do this one at home with my babies while I'm running my daycare. I get to run two businesses in one. That might not be your thing, but to me, that's huge. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. So. For me, it's just like, don't pray for something and not want to maintain it. You know, um, everybody gets upset. It's like, they left me on red. Good. Keep interacting with them. You know what I'm saying? Now you don't have to give them those credits that you promised them. Now they can pay full price when they come back to you in two months. Does, you know, Doritos doesn't stop putting commercials up because they don't meet their quota one month. Like they keep on drilling it in our head and drilling it in our head that we need it. So consistency is key. I mean, you know, this is amazing what we have here. So my thing that I did mentally was I told myself, do the hard things. Like even with my, when I, when my damn washer buzzes at midnight and I just lay down and I'm tired, I have this little voice in my head now because I've been training myself since January 7th. And it's like, do the hard things because I'll be lazy if I don't tell myself that. So I get up and I put the clothes in the dryer. You know what I'm saying? Like it it's midnight. Get up in the middle of the night to swap your washer to your dryer. Yeah, I will. I will. Well, you no, know I'm what? Just, I live in the I'm desert and it, it gets it's hot out here. So it gets that nasty smell if it's wet all day. Long story short. But my point is I started that with the business and that's what's given me this like no excuse mentality of I have to do the hard things. Okay. My kids hanging off my hip, giving me, you know, a bad hair day, whatever. It's not an excuse anymore. It's just evidence that anybody can do the business. And I think that's the biggest thing for me is that I complain about my kids all the time. They're like, my five-year-old is so attached to me. It's ridiculous. He's worse than my two-year-old, but it's no longer an excuse to me. It's evidence now. So if I have to take a picture and my five-year-old is like hanging on to my leg or something, the damn picture is going to my story. And it's going to be like, this is what Black Label does for me. I put up with this all day because it could be an excuse or it could be the fuel to my fire. And now it's just the fuel to my fire. And it's just evidence for people that are looking at me saying, I can't do that. Like, there's no way. How do you have time for that? Yes, you can. I'm doing it. I'm fitting it in the nooks and crannies of my day. Yes, you can. Turn your excuse into evidence that it can be done. Uh, in case y'all didn't know, Camille's like a public speaker. <laughs> 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 but I love that you said do the hard things. You know, we um, had a Zoom a long time ago with Brian Tracy, who is actually the author of a book called Eat That Frog. And if y'all haven't read it, it's a really good book. So I've read, I've never read it. <laughs> but the concept, it's on my lips. <laughs> but the concept of it is to eat the, okay, who wants to eat a frog? Well, the frog is disgusting, right? So you eat the frog and all of a sudden, everything else you eat that day suddenly doesn't seem so bad because the first thing you ate was disgusting, okay? Do the hard things in the morning when you wake up. If you don't like following up, follow up first. Get out of the way. If you don't like, you know, posting an opportunity story, do it first thing in the morning, get it out of the way. And then everything else that you do throughout the day just doesn't seem that bad because you did the worst thing for, I hate wishing people happy birthdays. I love y'all, but I hate it. I don't like doing birthdays. So it's always the first thing on my list that way everything else just seems easier. Do the hard things, do the things that, you know, I don't always want to get on Zooms. I don't always want to host work with me. I don't always want to, you know, do the things, but I have to do the things. Like think of a 200K or a millionaire that you love and that you look up to and now put yourself in the, their shoes. What if they were watching over your shoulder, right? Would they be impressed with what you're doing? If you were a, a, a boss looking to hire people based on your work ethic over the last 30 days, would you hire yourself? You know, think about it that way. You have to do the hard thing. So um, I don't think I had anything else. Oh, I did want to bring something up though. And it's really funny. I brought this up with a personal moment that I had with Shelby and I want to bring it up with Camille. So when we were at conference and this is a good point, I promise. We were at conference, we were at the piano bar 
And I was embarrassingly twerking, dancing, just being, I'm embarrassed a little bit. And I looked at Camille and I said, when we go home, please still be my friend. And she goes, yeah, okay. And I said, please don't quit. (laughs) She looked at me and she said, okay, and mind you, I'm her sponsor. Like she signed up with me. She looked at me straight face and said, you would never be the reason I quit. You ain't gonna derail me. Nothing that you could say or do is ever gonna make me quit. And have that mentality. I don't care who says what, I don't care who does what, I don't care if you're my, my upline walked away, some of my downline walked away, my mom says that what I'm doing is a scam. Look at that person, I mean, and, and you're not gonna be the reason I quit. It don't matter. She was like, you can be psycho and I'm not here for you. I'm here for me. I'm here for my dreams. Like you do what you want. I'm not quitting. Right. And I think that that was really powerful that she said that. And I'm glad that she still loves me. Um, But you know what, let me say something really fast because it's funny that you mentioned that because one of the things that always sticks in my head when times are getting rough or when I have a new promoter, they grab a 400 pack and they ghost me. What sticks in my head is when I went 4K back in April, 2020, and you were like, God damn, you're sorry, guys, your PV is $3,200. And I said, my promoters aren't working. And you were like, that's okay. I'll bet on myself every single time. And yeah. that has stuck in my head since that day, because if we, you know, continue to strive and live up to that moment, you will get those end of month miracles that even Shelby was just talking about, you know, you just got to continue to go for it and you'll be met in the middle by whatever you believe in. Yeah, absolutely. And put those goals out there, you guys, like your affirmations and your goals. Um, when we were in Mexico in February, uh, Paul or Jason had said something at a leadership meeting. He was like, if you went to an airport and you saw a terminal that said, you know, flight departing destination to be determined, you would knock it on that airplane because you're like, I don't know where they're taking me. So if you're, if your business is a destination to be determined, who's going to get on there with you? Right. I will go on my social media and I'll say, I want to help people earn their luxury auto bonus. I want to help people earn their VIP bonuses and their rank advancement bonuses. And I want to help people earn a weekly income. And, you know, we're going to be, we're almost a $6 million sales team. And I'm like, just wait, because we're just getting started. I give people that vision, you know, so the destination is not to be determined on our team. We're going up and I share that with people and I share my goals. Um, And it's really good to share those goals too, because when you do put them out there you share them with people subconsciously you know we want people to ask us like hey did you hit that goal and we want to say yes we did you know who wants to say no I didn't do it right so when you put those goals out there and you're like this is where we're going subconsciously whether you're going to start taking those action steps to what you need to do to get it done because now you know you've put that out there people know what you're going for and now you want to make sure that in six months time you can be like told you I was going to do it now you ready, you know, so, um, that was all I had, unless either of you guys want to say something else. I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys so much for getting on. It's just so funny. I messaged Lisa on Tuesday and I was like, what could I do? She said Thursday. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, but I said, yes. Anyways, which also you guys just say yes and figure it out later. Right. If somebody asks you to do an opportunity zoom or an opportunity live, Say yes and figure it out later. Um, When your chill comes in, right? And hopefully we've all ordered our chill. I got four. Um, When your chill comes in, say yes now. When it comes in, I'm going live. Say yes right now and then figure it out when the chill comes in. Go live anyways. Um, If there's a, a local coming up, it's say yes to going and figure it out when the time when the time comes. Say yes and figure it out later because there's never been a time where I said yes to an opportunity to help others or train others or show up and get the help myself that I regret. It's never happened. And I've always left more empowered and I've always left with new tips and new, a new mindset and a new excitement that I didn't have walking into it. Right. So, um, just say yes and figure it out later. Um, thank you guys so much. I love all you guys, um, follow them on their social medias because they're both amazing. They're fire. Um, and I think that's it. So have a good night, everybody.